In this lesson, we will have a quick look at transformers and how they work. Just remember that this falls into the electromagnetic induction section of the physics syllabus. And they often ask questions about your transformers, how they work and what their use is. And then after we've looked at transformers, we will move on to diodes and how we transform alternating current into direct current. So firstly, we need to know that you can only transform alternating current. You cannot transform direct current. Transformers change the voltage. So we'll see how that's done. But on one side of your transformer, you will have a certain voltage and you can even ha either have a step up transformer where you raise your voltage or a step down where you lower your voltage. <clears throat> and then Transformers are based on your Faraday's law of induction, which we discussed in depth in our electromagnetic induction video. So go have a look at that if you're not sure about Faraday's law of induction. So on a transformer, if we simply look at its components, we have two coils. So your first coil or your primary coil, as we call it, would be here. And your secondary coil or your second coil would be over here. You would have your input at your primary coil and your output at your secondary coil. And this block or where it's labeled Fe for iron is known as your iron core. So that is your core of your transformer. Now your input voltage is connected to the primary coil, as we've said. So your primary coil over here, you have AC current flowing through it. So it's at any point in time, your current could be flowing this way or it could be flowing this way. It's alternating and we must remember that the direction is therefore changing at any point in time. So by the alternating current, this provides time varying magnetic flux. So we know that current causes a magnetic field around the current carrying conductor and that magnetic field is varying as your current changes direction and changes and therefore changes your magnetic flux and your magnetic field around your, your current carrying conductor. As we see here, your magnetic field, which is given off by your um, current carrying conductor, aligns your domains in your iron core and amplifies the magnetic field. The secondary coil then picks up the amplified magnetic field, the magnetic flux. So the magnetic field that's given off from here is amplified by the iron and therefore picked up by the secondary coil an EMF is induced in your secondary coil by Faraday's law. Remember, go and check out Faraday's law in our previous video if you're not sure about that. And an EMF is induced in your secondary coil. And your iron core, if they ever ask you what the function of the iron core is, is to magnify the field and increase your field strength. So it simply magnifies the field given off by your primary core and magnifies it so that it can induce a current or an EMF in your secondary coil. We must know that if we're moving, as in this example, from less coils to more coils, we can see there are more coils on the secondary coil, then it is a step up transformer. So your voltage will be stepped up. And if it's the other way around, if we move from more coils, so if we were to make this the primary and this the secondary, it would be a step down transformer, therefore lowering your voltage from your primary to your secondary coil. The output voltage depends entirely on the input voltage and the number of loops. So we have a ratio from our primary to our secondary coil, and this is given on your formula sheet. So the voltage of your secondary over the voltage of your primary equals your number of coils on your secondary over your number of coils on your primary. We must remember from this over here that a step up increases your voltage and a step down decreases your voltage. So let's look at a quick example or where we look at the formula so if we have the formula vpip equals vsis you will find this on your formula sheet as your voltage increases so does your current decrease so if we increase our voltage over here in order to keep this constant our current will decrease and if we decrease our voltage our current increases so it is a it is a opposite um relationship where your voltage increases your current decreases and where your current increases your voltage decreases now that is very useful when we look at the way that we move current through our cities and through our power grid 
So alternating current, the advantage of using alternating current is that the potential difference can be changed using a transformer. So remember, potential difference is our voltage. And as we've discussed, our transformer can either step up or step down our voltage. And therefore, we can change the voltage. Now, this is very useful when we move our current around the power grid. So voltage, as we said, can be stepped up at power stations to high voltage so that electrical energy can be transferred in power lines at high voltage and low current. As we've said, if we increase our voltage, we decrease our current. So at power stations, we increase our voltage so that we can transfer our current in power lines at low current and high voltage. And this ensures low energy loss due to heat. So if we look at something like this, we have our power plant, we have a step up transformer before we feed it into the power lines. So we go from 12 kilovolts to 400 kilovolts. So we've increased our voltage. And then we have a step down when we get to our cities or the place that we want to use our current. We step it down to power that can be used in, that can be transmitted at a lower voltage. And then we transfer it even lower down. We step it even further down to be used in households and to be used with normal appliances. So the theory behind increasing your voltage and lowering your current comes from this power formula right here. So your power lost in your resistor is equal to your power, which equals I squared times R. So the smaller the current, so smaller your I, the smaller the energy lost in the national power grid. So if we decrease our current by increasing our voltage as we do at our step up transformer, we lose less power in our resistors. So we lose less power to the national grid and therefore we have more power to be used by appliances in houses, businesses, etc. So in your transformer, your power of your primary equals the power of the secondary. So power is constant and P equals VI from your formula sheet. So there we have VPIP equals VSIS, primary and secondary. And as we increase our voltage on our secondary, we decrease our current. Now we know that work is equal to I squared RT, where R and T are constant because our resistance and our time will not change. And therefore our work done is directly proportional to our I, I squared. Therefore at a higher voltage, we have a lower I, as we see from over here, lower current, and low current equals lower work, so less work done. Therefore, less work is done and less energy is lost to heat and friction. So this, by stepping up the voltage, we simply lower our current and therefore we lose less energy to the power grid. And it's more efficient because we are transferring more current to the places that we need to use it. So we, if they ever ask you why we would produce AC instead of DC, we need to know that AC is easy to generate from an AC generator, or there are other ways to produce it. However, we don't study them in the syllabus and it is easy to convert to DC and it's easy to step up and step down when we transfer it along the power grid. Lastly, we look at rectification, which is where we use diodes. So AC is rectified to produce DC. A diode is used and we must know that a diode is a component that allows current to flow in one direction only. So if we look at this um, system like this or a setup like this where we have a power source and our current is moving like this, our diode will only allow it to move in the direction of the arrow. So it will only allow it to move here. If we had AC power over here and then switched to move this way, then the current would not flow through the diode and there would be a short circuit. Therefore, you would have no flow of um, current in the anti-clockwise direction because it cannot get through the diode. So we have something known as half wave rectification where we use one diode. So if we have AC supply over here and it moves clockwise, it'll move through the load as we can see. However, if it moves anti-clockwise, will, it will not move through the load because it cannot get through the diode and therefore there's a short circuit and the load does not receive current. So the current that moves in the opposite direction will not complete the circuit and therefore load does not receive opposite directed current. So your output is only in one direction. As we see here, when we move in clockwise, we will have half wave of current and then we will lose this part of the current because it cannot pass through the diode. And in this way, we call this half wave rectification because we are rectifying to DC current. So it is only flowing in one direction. However, we are losing half of our current. 
And this is very inefficient as we lose half our current, which obviously is not efficient when we look at transferring power and using the current. So they developed something that we call full wave rectification, which fixes the problem of only getting half of your current. Now we do, we do this using four diodes as we show over here. If we have an alternating supply over here, let's look at if it moves from Y to X. So we follow the current up here and we see it can't move here because it would not flow through the diode. So it flows up. It would not flow here because it cannot flow through the diode. So it will flow down through the load and it would not flow here because this would be the opposite direction to where it needs to go. It wouldn't go back to Y, it's just come from Y. So therefore it goes past A and back to X. If we look at the other way, we will have flowing from X. So we flow from X up and would go through B. It can't go through A because it's the opposite direction. It throws through B, would not go to C because it cannot go through C, it's the opposite direction and flows down through the load and it would then flow up here because it wouldn't go back towards x and therefore it goes to y. Now we realize that even though our source is alternating, the current received at the load is always going from the top to the bottom. Therefore the direction of current through the load is never different. It never alternates. It is always flowing from top to bottom through the load and therefore we can see that our current at our load keeps one direction. It never goes below the x-axis. So it's always flowing in the same direction. And we can also see that we now have the second half of our current. We don't lose it to the bottom here. It is flipped to the top and in the same direction as our first half of the current. So we don't lose this bottom. It's simply rectified. And through full wave rectification, we get it flowing in the same direction as we've shown over here. And therefore our load receives our full current. So the load can draw power from each half cycle and power to load is double that of half wave rectification. So therefore it's much more efficient. And this is something that we mainly use in any application where we need to rectify our power. We don't really use half wave rectification because it's so inefficient. And you will need to know how to explain that the full wave rectification is done with four diodes and they will often ask you to explain the movement of current through the diode and explain how it works. Always remember, just follow the path. So we're going from Y to X, I'll explain it again. We move right and up. At this point, it can either go up or down. It won't go down because this is oppositely directed. It'll go up over here. It will either go here or here. It can't go here because this is opposite to the direction that it's flowing. So it'll go down through your load. Over here, it can go here or here, but it won't go here because it would not flow back to Y. That will be opposite to where it needs to flow. It won't go from Y to Y, it needs to go from Y to X. And therefore your potential difference will force it to move over here and therefore flow from Y to X. Just remember that through your load, your current will always flow in one direction. It will never alternate if you use full wave rectification.